Hi everyone, my name is Jessica with The Common Stack and we are starting our Trusted Seed Spotlight series to highlight some of the people in the Trusted Seed, um, all the work that they're doing and the amazing people and projects um, that are supporting the token engineering community. So we have got Luke Duncan today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your role with The Common Stack. Sure, yeah. Um... I'd say that like a lot of people that got into the Web3 space, the decentralization, decentralization space, the DAO space, um, I, I got into that space because I'm really attracted and excited about the potential for the technology to create a more fair and inclusive like world. Um, and uh, about three, three and a half years ago, I kind of like went down, down the rabbit hole and I was like very, very naive at the time being like, oh, this stuff is like totally ready for prime time. We just need to go out and and build it and uh, and it'll be great. And I found that uh, as I started like working on on projects um, and like contributing to, to open source projects, everything that I was like led to believe how ready this technology was for prime time was just not the case. Um, and, and there was just uh, incrementally like, I'd be like, okay, I wanna do this thing. It's really cool and amazing and awesome. And you'd have to go further and further down the stack. Um, everything would kind of like be in various stages of research incredibly inspired by all of this stuff and I think we're we're making progress um, but I find myself just looking for the uh, the specific uh, leverage points where like I can apply my skills to get us like incrementally closer uh, to that kind of vision or, or ideal that I think most of the, the people in this space that that really fall into uh, into that rabbit hole want want to eventually see so you're primarily a developer and also project manager and you're working with so many projects Aragon and you've started one hive just tell us a little bit about your role and and name a few of the projects that you're working with if you can sure yeah um so i worked really closely with aragon for a couple of years i started out kind of um doing doing research um not really doing very much development though i'm trying to pick up those skills uh, most of the time it's like product management um did one hive uh last year uh, as sort of a way to be like let's use these tools uh, and kind of dog food DAOs, um, and there were uh, some friends and community members that, that joined me. Uh, we've iterated a few times and we've built a, a number of tools. And, and more recently, we've been uh, working on um, a lot of stuff that aligns with the, uh, the common stack. We're, we're working on a conviction voting implementation. Um, we've got this uh, gardens DAO template that we're experimenting with. That's very like, uh, very much like reminiscent of the, the common stack, like commons model. Um, and um, and we're just trying to like uh, test out all of these ideas and, and put them in practice. Um, I'm also uh, somewhat involved with the Bright ID project um, and uh, excited to to see uh, decentralized identity uh, kind of make its way into to the space so that we can actually make more human centric as opposed to stake stake based organizations. Um, that's kind of the the stuff that's like most heavily on my radar. But mm -hmm. um, but I try and like dabble in in every uh, like open source project that strikes my fancy i just like hop in <laughs> fantastic and can you tell us a little bit more about uh one hive and gardens and maybe for people who could be watching that don't necessarily know about the common stack um what uh what are you focusing on building and how does one hive kind of fit into these community collaborations sure um so the uh the gardens model and, and conviction voting and, and common stack uh was really attractive for me, because it allows for open, permissionless kind of like bottom-up community organization. Um, so like you don't have to come to complete consensus uh, on uh, on every decision. Um, you have like a uh, like well thought out, like well engineered design um, that uh, kind of regulates uh, the economic flows within a community. Um, and I found that um, in uh, a lot of the like uh, projects that we're working on, like decentralized governance and um, and like DAOs and stuff. Uh, it was very much focused on like, how can we have everybody vote on every decision? Um, <laughs> and the uh, the stuff that we're trying to work on uh, with One Having Gardens and the stuff that Common Stack is pushing uh, is, is actually kind of the opposite. It's more bottom up. Like you, you can say, I, I want this to happen. If I get enough support, it'll happen. Um, people can come and go. And as they do, they're like contributing to uh, the shared shared goals of the the community, um, so uh, that that's kind of the uh, the main difference for me uh, compared to um, 
many of the other things is that like you're not voting on every decision you're you're interacting with like a, a system that, that kind of feels uh open and and more organic mm. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it seems like, you know, everybody was so excited about all the possibilities, but then when it actually comes down to the build, there are so many pieces. And I think aligning humans is always the challenge, right? So I think uh, it seems there was, uh, when initial blockchain technology rolled out and everybody went crazy and thought, oh, this is a solution, but tech is only as good as the people. Um, and we still have a lot to sort out as far as what governance mechanisms are going to work. Um, so speaking of some of those challenges, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges we you know, are facing as open source communities and to make really you know, solid, ethically engineered, fully operational, <laughs> you know, communities that can sell fund that can um, vote what do you think we we still need to do to to get to something that's really usable that is easy that everybody can use i mean i, I think that there's like a, a degree of abstraction you're going to have like pioneers that um uh, play with the the tech when it's like not quite quite ready for prime time um it probably fail many many times and i think we're still very much in that like early exploration phase um, but like for it to, to really be useful for lots of people, um, we need to like make sure that it's sound and validated. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm like working with now, I'm like very, very excited to like test it out and play with it, but like also extremely like worried uh, that things are going to break or they're not going to work um, as intended. And so like my, my feeling is that we need to have um, controlled like small experiments. We need to continue to do like research and engineering validation. One of the things I really appreciate about the common stack and token engineering community is this um, emphasis on like um, validating the system properties um, like ahead of time before we go in um, and like expect it to work a certain way. Um, so like creating this uh, like uh, circuit between uh, validation and engineering and then like experimentation and implementation um, and like having a tighter feedback loop um, is I think uh, probably really important um, to, to get this thing to the point where like I would be comfortable going to like uh, a random open source project and say hey you should use this thing um, like we, we still need to kind of like test it and we're we're in that like experimental phase mm, yeah and I think the challenges are pretty apparent but what have you seen that's working really well in the community that people are um, finding success in and, and what inspires you to keep going when maybe the budgets aren't there or things are breaking? Uh, what's inspiring so far that you've seen and what's working? Well, I, I think the most inspiring thing, and I, I think we see this in, in open source communities in general, is that like when you connect people that are sort of value aligned um, and you give them the opportunity to kind of have agency and ownership and like really like make uh, make contributions, it, it just feels good for everybody. Like uh, you you find that the uh, the contributions are rewarding in and of themselves. Um, you find the output is is useful for people. Um, and like uh, in these kind of like early stages, that like human connection um, is, is so important. Um, I, I think that like when we think of these like large networks, they all start as small communities. Um, where people are working together um, and, and have strong value alignment. Um, so figuring out um, how to scale that um, uh, kind of magic social quality um, to like uh, more than just like small groups of people um, to like much larger causes. And um, I, I think that um, that's really the goal. Mm. Awesome. And um, what resources do you need or are, is there anything you're looking for for your projects um, and how can people get a hold of you? Um, so I'm on Twitter and Telegram and Discord and Keybase um, pretty much all over the place. My handle is uh, LKNGTN. I don't know. You'll have to edit that or like figure that out, but uh, it's, it's there. Um, pretty easy to get a hold of in terms of like um, help. I, I think that like the most important thing is to just sort of um, like come participate and engage um, and give feedback and try things out and contribute where you can. Like um, we we need people to like help us distill what we're doing. We need people to like hack on things. We need 
um, uh, we need people to give give feedback and, and test things out. And like, um, we're again very much in that like sort of experiment mental phase. And so the the more people, the more eyes, um, the the more hands on on the thing, uh, uh, the faster we can iterate and the faster we can learn. Awesome. Is there anything else that you'd like to share? Um, I um, I would love to see. Um, I'd love to see like more CAD CAD work. <laughs> um, th this is one piece where I feel like it, it is so incredibly, uh, incredibly valuable. But like personally, I don't feel like I have the highest leverage there, and and I don't know enough people that have high high leverage there. Um, that like uh, it, it just feels like uh, if I can direct more people into that that space, it would be great. So I'll shout that out. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so more help for the Python modelers who are doing all the systems modeling for all the yeah. things that we're trying to build. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Luke. I very much appreciate you uh, being part of our Trusted Seed Spotlight, and we will definitely put all the information in descriptions and with our links so that people can contact you, and also um, they can apply to become a member of the Trusted Seed. So thank you so much for joining me today, and for your time. Thank Keep you. building. <laughs>